Hi guys, welcome. This is Dr. Dilip and uh, I'm having a great pleasure in inviting Dr. Kartikeya Mathur who scored single digit ranks in the recently conducted INISS exam and is All India AIMS merit list rank is 8 and is common merit list rank is 9 and both are basically single digit ranks and uh, this is phenomenal and uh, you need a kind of guts and courage to choose a field like gastroenterology and endocrinology when you're writing INISS because you know there are very limited seats maybe hardly you can count with your fingers one seat two seat only you have those many seats and still he has tried to give those kind of tough exams ultimately uh, he has cracked it though and his neat ss rank is also quite astonishing it is 242 and right now he has almost equal possibilities for entering the neat ss domain as well as the iniss domain which is phenomenal and congratulations dr kartikeya mathur Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be with you here. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been our pleasure as well. And uh, before going into the interview, I I would just like to ask you, like, uh, what was your preparation strategy? Because the interview per se is going to be the techniques that you have followed for preparation. But before that, I want to just discuss on uh, what are your basic preparation strategies? Because you might be working or you might be in your residency program. So. What was your basic strategy, and how did you take this forward? Yes, yeah. actually, uh, I have done my undergraduate and postgraduate from R&T Medical College, and uh, this year only I have uh, cleared my MD exam in the month of June this year, sir. So actually, sir, in the uh, second year of MD residency only, sir, I was very much clear that I have to do uh, a DM course. I will not be an MD medicine. That was pretty much clear from my side. Then, uh, when I was in my second year, sir, the pattern of examination in uh, both in neat ss and iniss was similar it was like 60% of the questions will come from your branch and 40% feeder so i started preparing by that only sir and i had taken uh, two subjects that i may choose in the future that was one was gastroenterology one was nephrology now by the end of uh, second year sir i was pretty much clear that i have to do uh, gastroenterology only then sir as you know uh, last year uh, in the month of september and october there was a drastic change in the pattern and uh, at that time sir my preparation actually shook a bit because uh, it was uh, very tough for me at that time because the pattern changed and the pattern was uh, similar for our seniors but it changed for us so i have to prepare like neat ss with a different strategy and iniss with a different strategy sir i would say that one thing that helped me was i uh, wrote the iniss that was there in april also at that time i was in my md residency only it was tough for me to write but i anyway i wrote it sir with the some 15 20 day preparation sir and i got a rank of 30 at that time in gastroenterology sir so that pushed me and sir, very important thing was sir that uh, that told me that what are the uh, topics they are focusing on and especially now as they have uh, moved more towards uh, general medicine biostatistics these things i i would have ignored this time but as they have come last time so i paid attention to that also this time so i think sir that has helped me and you know just before iniss two months before i have a neat ss so i was very comfortable that okay fine my general medicine was fine i have to focus on gastroenterology i uh, just before the exam i saw your video also sir uh, where you talked about that you have to you know even uh, revise the bio statistics so three four questions i think it came from bio statistics also sir So I think that also helped me, and that is how, sir. Uh, I think uh, I can say that everything fits in in the end, and uh, how I was able to do it. And uh, I would also like to ask about the resources and how different it is to prepare for the NEET SS exam and the INSS exam right now. Because previously, you yourself has said like INSS is diff. I mean, INSS and NEET SS was almost similar like a year ago, but right now. Uh, the neat ss cannot be compared with iniss at all whatsoever and uh, when it comes to your preparation so what different resources you really used or you just prepared in the same way as that of iniss even for neat ss and the vice versa uh, sir to be honest sir uh, i i knew it that uh, this is uh, the pattern of examination and the kind of competition that has been building it's not like you can read the standard textbooks and you can just give the exams you have to you know join an institute you have to be thorough with the knowledge of books and you have to be uh, thorough with the mcqs also so uh, in neat ss sir my uh, strategy was simple because in neat ss they are covering uh, you know lot of subjects are there so i was basically focusing on harrison sir not about not uh, going deviating away from it 
so that was my basic strategy now as i told sir i prepared i started preparing early and that time the pattern was dif- different so i had already completed you can say sir by the end of third year some 30 40% i had completed slezinger also sir so that has helped me because i revised slezinger this time and i solved mcqs so at present sir if you ask me that somebody is going on and now he has to prepare for neat ss and ini ss being both the exams having absolutely opposite pattern i would say that once uh, uh, for the beginning the person should target neat ss because that is the exam that will give you guarantee that okay fine you will get a seat even if you get a 500 rank yes that's sure that you will get a seat next once you have done with your neat ss now you are thorough with your general medicine concept in uh, ins also you will be getting 30 40 questions from general medicine so yes they will help you there and now you can in uh, last 2 to 3 months i think you can now focus on your speciality you can solve the mcqs and and that's what i used to say to the students also because many people used to text me like uh, what could be the preparation strategy i just say them like just go through harrison that's the basic primer like i mean nobody can read the entire harrison by the way so just go through the important topics at least like whatever they have been asking in the past like just go through those topics and be thorough in that because anyway neat ss is going to be line by line from harrison and uh, of course like once you start com- i mean getting confidence that you're going to score in neat ss now you can just uh, flip over to your topic of interest i mean even i would say like in the, with the current competition and with the current uh, time limits that students are having because immediately after md they have to give the exam so in keeping that in perspective i would say like just keep one specialty because people used to choose two specialties or even three specialties and uh, that will put a lot of strain on the candidate so i would say like just ke- i mean keep one specialty as your primer and just read in depth about that uh, particular specialty so my favorite textbook uh, in gastroenterology is yamada basically like i i had a lot of interest towards yamada i don't know why and uh, i mean what is special i mean what's your textbook of choice for liver so shift uh, shift have... pathology is great sir i think i have re- i read not i am not uh, somebody who has read so much of shift pathology i have just seen some of the tables you know sir and slezinger is one book sir i loved it actually uh, i don't know it has it has been written uh, very nicely i feel sir i am exactly. not uh, exactly exactly so that's the reason <laughs> i not... i mean i i am a big fan of yamada more yeah, than uh, slicing it slicing it is like absolutely as yes. it's like kind of a harrison of gastroenterology it's like the gold standard yeah. in gastro so far but i yes, like the amada more and um, to be honest i am a big fan of sheila sherlock and uh, people read like shift for liver but i am a big fan of sheila sherlock also so th- i mean these are my textbooks during my md Uh, in anyways nevertheless so now like having seeing the challenges that you are facing like because you have to have like completely different levels of thinking when it comes to inss and neat ss so let me just stick on to inss and ask like in gastroenterology what topics do you think are very important and they are repetitively coming in inss because i believe there are some topics which are coming repetitively but it's better to ask from the candidates perspective first of all sir i would say the complications of cirrhosis they are absolutely important like you have uh, lines of like very seal bleeds are there or you have hepatic encephalopathy hepatorenal syndrome you have to be absolutely thorough with it all the tables of slezinger are must do in these topics even uh, some drugs that you have albumin if you are giving or drugs like tadalafil you should be thorough with the dosing also that they may ask secondly there are i have uh, like i have experience of two ini they will definitely ask percentage based questions very important are percentage based questions which we general uh, generally we seem to ignore because we see that okay they might not ask but they ask you very important percentages what is the percentage of very severe bleed in this uh, uh, cpt class or something like that some scoring based questions are very important like meld score cpt score you should be able to calculate it there also there only they are uh, allowing you to you know uh, do rough work that is because they want you to do some simple calculations even in biostatistics some simple calculation they they expect you to do it so that these are the must do topics sir i feel that too actually and uh, even i felt like uh, people tend to ignore certain common topics and it it is important for from uh, practice perspective if you look at these percentages they are very important because you need to know like at what scoring and you are going to get what complication what is the risk of those complications so that's why it's important and when it comes to gastroenterology i think hardly you are having around like 8 to 10 scores the major scores i would say yes sir like that's it around 8 to 10 and i i don't think it's a big deal to like uh, 
read those percentages from those 8 to 10 scores maybe 11 yes. to 12 max i feel like those are the most important scores when it comes to yeah. like uh, gastro and most of the scoring systems if you see it will be skewed towards the hepatology than gastroenterology and these are scoring these are uh, things that we can you can easily score it's like mathematics uh, exactly. you are yes sir. so these and are the is something you don't know like you cannot like answer those questions yes. the other way not also is Yes. The other way, and if you have known it, it's like hundred percent. If you don't know it, it's zero yeah. percent. Yes, you will yes. not be able to score it at all. And yes, like you said, that there are certain important topics in the INASS compared to the other NEETSS. And uh, I would say one more point. I can add one more point. Like INASS exams tend to ask the dosages, like what you have said. But yes. the NEETSS usually doesn't tend to ask dosages. They just tend to ask the maybe the drug that you're going to use in that situation or probably like what is the diagnosis and what is the complication that you can expect. So these are the questions that you're going to get in need assess, but the drug doses as such will be asked in INSS. So that's the reason why I would also recommend students to learn the doses of some important drugs. For example, what is the dose of albumin that you're going to give in patients with uh, hepatorenal syndrome, for example? Or what is the dose of terlipresin that you're going to use in varicell bleed? Or what is the dose of optiotrin that you're going to use in varicell bleed? And what is the dilution of epinephrine that you're going to use to control the like peptic ulcer bleeding in endoscopy yes, yes, yes. in the forest classification? So these are some of the small, small points that a candidate should know like uh, before entering INISS exam. So probably when they start learning like uh, these stuff, like they will feel like INISS is more comfortable, I suppose. Absolutely. And uh, to add to it, sir, uh, like in interview round also, sir, in the interview round, you don't have options. And specifically, when these are the, the things which will give you an extra edge, I would feel. If you are just answering tightly present or if you are giving a, with the dosages, that will definitely give you an upper edge. That is what I feel. Yeah, definitely. So what you are saying is absolute gold, man. Like, and again, I just wanted to like wind it up by asking, like, what are the resources you followed, basically, apart from the textbooks? So what is the role of uh, prep SS in your preparation? Because... That, I mean, because I mean, after these kind of things, we can take a little bit of pride to us. Actually, uh, uh, prep letter, sir, they, they helped me. Uh, what after the MD exam, sir, I had taken a lot of free grant tests that you, to, you used to conduct, sir. All the free grant tests I had taken for neat SS also, sir. What I felt was in uh, prep letter, the uh, first of all, I would talk about the interface, sir. It's absolutely very very much helpful to us the interface of the exam that you used to make uh, in those grand tests sir it was absolutely like the exact copy of the real exam so that really helped us secondly the question sir the pattern was very nice that you used to you know what i felt was like uh, in uh, any exam which is of you know 150 questions some questions will be tough some questions will be very simple some questions would be you know where you have to apply your brain and new questions always used to come so that is i think absolute gold from uh, prep ladder sir uh, next, sir, just before my INSS exam, sir, I uh, took your INSS mock test and I secured maybe a rank of four or five in that. I, I, uh, it was like 10 days before the exam. So what I did was I solved the uh, question bank, sir. And uh, I was able to solve 50 to 60% of the question bank in that time. Sir, what it helped me was because in the last, uh, you know, seven to 10 days, these are very important days, what I feel, sir. And in those days, sir, I uh, did not have any, uh, you know, strict plan what I what I should do, how I should revise. But your prep letter questions were, I think, very very nice questions were there, and uh, the recall questions were there. It was like that I'm uh, recalling the whole of the textbook again. It was like that the questions were made. Very nice clinical questions were there in uh, gastroenterology sections, sir. I would say that, and that helped me a lot. And to add the cherry on the top, sir, I think your uh, one. Uh, video session you conducted, sir, I think four or five days before the exam, where you, you know, dissected the INSS exam, you told that, you know, don't forget the topics of, you know, uh, AIMS used to ask emergency medicine, AIMS, uh, uh, critical care, AIMS is very much into, you told about biostatistics. I think those things, I was not going to revise it, but I revised it and that helped me a lot. And thank you very much, Dr. Kartike Madhur. And I think uh, we're all really, really proud of you. And uh, you have given a lot of insight to the candidates who are preparing right now for the next NEET SS as well as INISS. And uh, once again, hearty congratulations. Anything else you want to say? Uh, yes, sir. I would like to, you know, use this platform to thank some of the people who have been always there with me. Uh, firstly, I would like to uh, thank my parents. Uh, 
uh, it is all because of their blessings and they were really uh, pillars of my success because i have been able to crack uh, my pmt meet pg and now uh, super specialty exam with my first attempt so i, I think uh, i would like to give it to them first of all next i would like to uh, mention a name of my uh, md medicine guide uh, dr dp singh sir and dr himan maur sir uh, so my uh, guide he is uh, he has retired just two days ago so i think i would like to dedicate this rank to him on his retirement that is what uh, <laughs> i would like to say i'm glad that you remember each and every one of them that you have helped uh, in your success right now and thank, thank you. you very much dr kartik mathur and uh, let's wind up with the interview and wishing you all the very best from my side and from the whole preplat and it assist team thank you very much once again thank, so thank you so much sir. thank you it's been an honor sir. thank you